Now one day, Creator said, brothers and sisters, come here. I want to present each of you with a gift. All the animals and Trickster too came. The Indian market was started 44, well actually 45 years ago, um, to provide the native artisans a place or venue to display and sell their goods. At that time, uh, they had spread blankets on the ground and uh, it has grown considerably to now uh, be tents and villages and uh, it, so it's much, much different. The, the goals were to introduce people to the uh, native culture, but basically at that time it was uh, uh, the selling of their artistic products and also introduction of people to uh, fry bread and uh, things of that nature. I understand there would be a hundred people in line for fry bread because that was the only time and only once a year when they would get fry bread. They, it gives back to the native community in several ways. One, we still provide a venue for artists to sell their wares, to display and sell their wares. And also, it gives native entertainers and also a venue to entertain and to uh, teach about their culture. Oftentimes, they uh, not only perform on stage, but they explain a lot about their regalia, their the dances, the customs, and the background of the dances that they're doing. So um, that's for them. So in any case, uh, that's another way of giving back. by uh, having an area called the Kihim. It's an autumn word for village, and uh, it was a name that we researched through the uh, historical department at the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. And so the Kihim was suggested to us as the, as the name that we should use, or could use, for village. typical ideas about what the native community is. This market shows the diversity of the native culture. It also shows that the native culture is not a static thing. It's not fixed back in history. That it is an evolving culture. And so um, by having people like Ramona Farms here to talk about the modern way of merchandising the uh, temple beans that they resurrected from uh, almost extinction to being able to market it commercially today. Things like that are important. Not many of us don't have the opportunity to travel to the Hopi uh, country. And we have Linda Taylor here, a Hopi uh, peaky bread maker. And she constructed the oven yesterday, and she's uh, cooking the picky bread today and giving samples out to people. And it's a very unique kind of bread. They call it picky bread, but it's as thin as rice paper. And so therefore, uh, people will learn not only how things are made, but also how 
in my face. And most of the uh, demonstrators are also teaching hands-on activities. For example, Tony Duncan, the five-time world hoop dancing champion, has brought, will bring many sizes of hoops so that people from adults to children can all learn how to hoop dance. So right in this square where we're located is where he'll do, uh, teach them. The Kehewin Native Theater from Canada will be also telling stories here with their oversized masks. And afterward, they'll sit at the table and show people how to make paper masks of uh, things like eagles or whatever, uh, wolves. And so um, this is a place where uh, young people can, can learn about uh, the, the cultural stories that are told by storytellers. We also have here Emo Pedro. He's uh, from the Gila River community. And he is uh, uh, one of Arizona's living treasures. And today he's demonstrating how to uh, nap arrowheads. And he also has a, uh, at a booth uh, an opportunity for visitors to use the adolado to throw spears. And he has a, a thing that's like a straight boomerang that it's called a rabbit stick. And that's what they use to throw at rabbits to hunt them. Uh, he also has the bow and arrows and uh, that people can use at uh, target practice. And so uh, <laughs> there's a lot of interactivity here. Another great thing would be the community painting that Randy Kemp is in charge of. So to see that the community come together and manage to make a wonderful work of art that gets shown to even more people, I, I can't imagine uh, how much more satisfying those things can be. So, some of the art seem to be very, very sophisticated now. Um, if you see the uh, featured artist today, he uh, makes the pottery and then he incises very intricate designs of feathers and, and hummingbirds and buffalo into the, to the uh, pot. And the feathers are located all the way around the piece of pottery and he does not use calipers he does not measure it he does everything by eye and if by chance that the uh, feathers don't quite fit then the whole pottery is ruined so it's a uh, very very intricate work and uh, uh, we have a commemorative pin showing uh, the work that he does. So yeah, it, there has been changes, but also traditionally there's also uh, maintained the uh, old traditional ways. Ron Carlos, a very well-known uh, uh, potter, uh, will show people how to make pottery uh, not by the coil method you know, by, or, or on a, uh, turning it on, on the table, but by using the uh, paddle and anvil ma method where he's uh, tapping the pottery into shape. And so uh, these are the kinds of things that people can learn and, and find out his what historically people have done and what currently people are doing to uh, uh, change the culture of the uh, native peoples.
seeing a young person just delighting in biting into a fry bread or, or a little girl. We just saw uh, one of the Duncan girls, Mia, the youngest one, dancing with, in full regalia in front of the audience at the main stage, uh, uh, going to an event where uh, here where I, they were doing a social uh, basket dance and just enjoying the whole experience. And the young girl was about six years old came and put out her hand to me to dance with her. And I'm not a dancer. <laughs> and, but it was so cute and so wonderful, I, c I couldn't refuse. And, and I did get up to dance. So it's taken me out of my comfort zone. And uh, everything about this place, I enjoy the people, the volunteers, the, the staff here at the museum. Uh, the artists that come here, the demonstrators that come here year after year, and they're not looking for um, financial gain. Um, they, they can sell there, but they spend so much of their time explaining their craft and everything else that that you can't help but be grateful for the, their willingness to share uh, all the secrets behind their their craft, whether it's mapping arrowheads or painting.